I'm feeling a little bit tired or frazzled, just in need of some comfort viewing, there's one BBC adaptation that I very frequently turn to, and that is the gorgeous production of Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South. This was made in the year 2004. It stars Daniela Denby Ash as Margaret Hale and the gorgeous Richard Armitage as John Thornton. Somehow, watching this adaptation, one of my favourite TV adaptations of all time, always makes me feel better. Elizabeth Gaskell was born in the year 1810. She was a remarkable woman, a woman I'd have absolutely loved to meet. I think of all the Victorian novelists, she would have been the one that I'd have felt most comfortable sitting down with to enjoy a cup of tea and to chat about her wonderful fiction. The first of her novels that I fell in love with was her novel Cranford, which is actually set back in her past in the Regency era. I think that Cranford was in many ways a very brave novel for her to write. And the reason why it was brave is because it features a middle-aged heroine, not something you find very often in Victorian novels. Heroines were expected to be young and beautiful. But Miss Matty is not beautiful. She's not wealthy. She has no important relations. She's not even particularly intelligent, but she is a wonderfully lovable heroine. And I adore reading about Miss Matty and her various adventures in the very female-dominated town of Cranford. That novel, too, was superbly filmed by the BBC with Judi Dench and a star-studded cast always worth watching. But Cranford is a really beautiful novel and one that I can very strongly recommend. North and South is Elizabeth Gaskell's industrial novel, and it was published in serial installments between 1854 and 1855. It concerns the adventures of a young woman called Margaret Hale. She has had a gently bred childhood living down in the rural south of England and spending a bit of time in London. But her father suddenly has religious doubts. He decides to give up his position as a minister in the Church of England, and he takes his wife and his daughter up to the north of England to live there. Margaret is deeply shocked that she has to go and live in the polluted, smoky, dirty, overcrowded northern part of England. Now, Elizabeth Gaskell lived her married life in the city of Manchester, and Manchester is the setting for this novel, although she changes the name of the city to Milton. And Margaret has to learn how to adapt to life in this big, grimy city. She makes friends with a young mill worker called Bessie Higgins. And throughout the course of the novel, she changes, learns, and adapts. She also comes to meet the mill owner, John Thornton, who's a fabulous hero. Sparks fly between them. And of course, by the end of the novel, the two of them are romantically attached. So the novel is a wonderful love story, as well as being so much else. I think it is the greatest of all of the industrial novels written in the Victorian era. Charles Dickens had a go with Hard Times, but I don't think Hard Times is nearly as good as North and South. My other great favourite of Elizabeth Gaskell's novels is her Wives and Daughters, once again superbly filmed by the BBC. Tragically, Wives and Daughters was not finished. Elizabeth Gaskell probably had about one chapter still to write. She was sitting in a house that she had just purchased with her daughter, having a cup of tea, and she was chatting to her daughter. Her heart stopped mid-sentence, and she died. So she never got to write that last chapter. They had to imagine it for the television adaptation, and I think they did a really fabulous job with the scene that they created uh, to finish off her fabulous novel. One really interesting and I think quite revolutionary thing about Wives and Daughters is the fact that it features a hero who is a scientist. As far as I'm aware, he is the first scientist hero that we find in all of literature. And Roger Hamley is a gorgeous character. And I really love the heroine Molly, who has grown up without her own mother, 
who died when Molly was very small. She's very close to her doctor father, but her father decides that he needs to remarry in order to give his beloved Molly a stepmother. And he doesn't really make a very good choice. So Molly then has to adapt not only to a stepmother, but to a stepsister as well. I think Wives and Daughters is a wonderful novel. Many people I know are put off reading a book that has not been finished, but it comes so very, very close to the actual end. I don't think it matters too much. It's made quite clear by Elizabeth Gaskell what is going to happen. Elizabeth Gaskell is a really fascinating woman. And uh, it's really interesting to read a good book about her life. The one, the one that I can recommend is Elizabeth Gaskell, A Habit of Stories, by the excellent biographer Jenny Uglow. This gives us a real picture of the challenges that Elizabeth Gaskell had to cope with. She was, unlike many of the other women Victorian novelists, she was a married woman. She was the wife of a minister. She was expected to do good charitable work and help in her husband's parish. She became a mother to four children. She had to run her home. And interestingly, that Manchester home is now a marvellous museum, saved thanks to the television popularity of Elizabeth Gaskell's novels. So people like Dan Judy Dench spearheaded a campaign to save her house for the nation and have it turned into a museum. So she had all of these different competing demands on her time. Charles Dickens used to get very frustrated with Elizabeth Gaskell when he was publishing some of her fiction in his serial publications. And he got frustrated because she was not always entirely punctual with her deadlines. But Dickens could just retreat to his study and get on with writing his novels. He didn't have to worry about what dinner was being put on the table, how the children were being brought up, and all of the other arrangements within a parish. Elizabeth Gaskell did, and she had to juggle, like many a modern woman, all of these different demands on her time. I think it's quite amazing that she managed to write as many novels as she did produce. Charles Dickens at one stage wrote to a friend, Mrs. Gaskell, Mrs. Gaskell, oh, if I were her husband, how I would beat her. Well, fortunately, she was married to a nicer man than Charles Dickens, and he did not beat her, and she had a happy marriage. He also, of course, ended up writing a wonderful biography of her good friend, Charlotte Bronte. I think she set new biographical standards with that book, and even though it has some mistakes in it, because she did not have access to the amount of information that a biographer has access to today, and many of the people she was writing about were alive, so she had to be very careful what she said about them, it is still a truly marvellous biography and well worth reading. So I hope today I have encouraged you to go away and get to know a little bit more about one of my very favourite 19th century novelists. I think the sitting and chatting to Elizabeth Gaskell would have been a lot less intimidating than talking to the very formidable George Eliot. I think it also would have been far more relaxing than sitting and talking to Charlotte Bronte. You might have had to make most of the conversation yourself when you were with her. But Elizabeth Gaskell would have been chatty, friendly. She adored a good bit of gossip. And I think it would have been truly fascinating to have sat down and talked to this remarkable, groundbreaking, and really wonderful novelist. Do go away and read more of Elizabeth Gaskell. And if you have enjoyed this YouTube clip, please like it or subscribe to get more book chats about my favorite authors and enjoy Elizabeth Gaskell.